We have a packed and exciting agenda this afternoon. Our module is on biopharmaceuticals, the trends and growth perspectives of the global biomanufacturing uh, market. We have as a main topic to talk about the realistic opportunity uh, in the shift from small to big molecules and with four main questions to be answered. The growth, in viewing the growth, the global perspective of the pharmaceutical market, does the forecast match reality? These four questions will be answered as we go about, and if we don't answer your questions, then remind us at the end to answer them for you. We will talk a bit about the biopharmaceutical hubs in emerging markets. I will touch a bit on Latin America, uh, pointing to the main countries involved currently in biopharmaceuticals. Thirdly, a topic of interest are the new and biological drugs in the research pipeline. And lastly, whether small molecule pharma companies strategically plan the future for a shift to the big molecule market. A lot of topics, a lot to discuss, and I would ask you to please hold your questions to the very end when we're all sitting up there, and I guess we, could, we can all answer it as we go along. So, as in every session, I start out with a few definitions. You may not need them, but uh, for those who do need them, uh, we have several definitions of biosimilars. The World Health Organization defines it as a biotherapeutic that is similar in terms of quality, safety, and efficacy to an already licensed reference biotherapeutic product. Whereas the EMA, the European Medicine Agency, defines a biosimilar as a biological medicinal product that contains a version of the active substance of an already authorized original biological medicinal product, referenced, referenced medicinal product. A biosimilar demonstrates similarity to the reference product in terms of quality characteristics, biological activity, safety, and efficacy based on a comprehensive comparability exercise. And then the FDA in the United States defines a biological product that is highly similar to a US licensed reference biological product, notwithstanding minor differences in clinical inactive components and for which there are no clinically meaningful differences between the biological product and the reference product in terms of safety, purity, and potency of the product. In Latin America, different countries define biosimilars in their own way. But in, it's more of a mix of all these three definitions. We don't really come out of the shell here too much. So we have seen that the, bios, the, the similar biotherapeutic products have revolutionized the therapy of certain diseases in therapeutic indications such as immunology, endocrinology, neurology, oncology, and hematology. Uh, this may have been set by the high cost and the expiration of patented reference innovative drugs that have promoted interest in similar biotherapeutic products, also known as biosimilars, biocomparables, or follow-on biologics. The biotherapeutic products represent one of the fastest growing sectors within the pharmaceutical industry with an expected growth of around 20% per year. This varies on the region, on the country. Specific treatments for diseases are associated with high costs for governments and the health, their health systems. They would alleviate costs for both governments and patients. However, similar biotherapeutic products have generated debate and controversy. As uh, costs decrease significantly, they have been questioned regarding their efficacy and safety with respect to the reference biotherapeutics, also called original or innovative medicines. The annual savings associated with the use of these drugs were estimated at 1.4 billion euros for the European Union in 2009. Several phenomena have prom 